Bon. <coughs> che, paragraph 4. In the beautiful, amazing, deep, exciting Hasidic discourse of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that he said in 1985 about who is Rebbe Shimon Bar Yochai. And basically the Rebbe has explained the Rebbe Shimon Bar Yochai is incomprehensible. And his pupils admitted it. He's incomprehensible and therefore they praised him with these awesome praises and said that he is the Sabbath, he is the Shabbat, he is holy and we are like <clears throat> mundane and he is the face of God. <clears throat> and we are just creations. Who? The Rebbe? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> listen, Hasidut is a little bit different. Hasidut, eh, eh, the purpose of Hasidut is to be accessible, that these deep ideas of Hasidut, of Kabbalah, should be practical and accessible to everyone. Namely, that it should inspire people more. Jews to <clears throat> to uh, learn the Torah and to do its commandments and to feel the godliness and the importance and the urgency of connecting to God through the Torah and the commandments. And that makes a person tremendously happy. And this is for all the Jews. It's to waken up all the Jews. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yachai was, wasn't Hasidut. It was not Hasidut. The Rebbe Shimon was Kabbalah. What is Kabbalah? Prior. Prior, yes. He laid the groundwork for Hasidut. Rebbe Shimon Barachai is <clears throat> like the ideal Jew. A person that he feels God all the time. Uh, a tzaddik, what they call. The purpose of, of Hasidut is uh, not to make everybody tzaddikim. Eventually, everybody will be tzaddikim. And Hasidu teaches us. That's how the, the book starts off. That he's given, every Jew is given an oath, be a tzaddik. But <clears throat> it, it's, it's not so simple. And in fact, for some Jews, it's impossible. And in fact, the majority of Jews, it's impossible. And according to the Tanya, not only the majority, but <clears throat> it's a miracle that there's even one. It's not. That, that is a tzaddik. What about the rest of the Jews? They're what we call Benoni. Benoni is a person that he can never really feel God all the time. He can never really feel the truth <clears throat> all the time. What What is a person like that supposed to do? You know, well, he can he can learn Kabbalah and he can fool himself. Which that's a, it's that's not so bad. You know, it's better to fool yourself about being a tzaddik than to be a genuine Russia, you know, to be a genuine evil person. That's how the Tanya starts off. You know, if you always look at yourself like you're bad, so you're going to be sad, you're going to be miserable. Main thing is to be happy, and a person can think, main thing is to be happy and, you know, never be uh, worried about, you know, Alfred E. Newman, you know, what me worry, just do whatever you want, just be happy. That's how the Tanya starts off. It doesn't use Alfred even more close. So Rabbi Shimon, his thing is to make tzaddikim, is to show what the ultimate truth is. And his pupils, even though they were tzaddikim, but they weren't at the level of Rabbi Shimon. And so they praised him. You know, it, it's, a, it's a little bit something like, I just thought of this, <clears throat> like Yosef and his brothers. You know, there's a very embarrassing story in the very beginning of the of the Torah that uh, Yosef had these uh, brothers and um, <clears throat> ten brothers and they hated him. It narrows it down that maybe they didn't all hate him, maybe they, but in any case they hated him. And explains the Hasidut that the reason that they hated him was because Yosef <clears throat> was on an entirely different 
level than they were. And they were tzaddikim. They were tzaddikim. And they knew that the whole world depended on them. And they thought, listen, we are tzaddikim, the whole world. If he's different from us, the only way he can be different from us is that he's worse than us. They couldn't imagine somebody that was better than them, that was more godly than them. And so they wanted to get rid of him. They thought he was just a danger to the existence of the world. But these pupils of Rabbi Shimon, I mean, I'm just, you know, throwing out a, a possibility. I'm not saying that this is real, but it's, it's something like that, maybe. That these pupils of Rabbi Shimon, they realized that Rabbi Shimon was infinitely greater than they were, just like Yosef's brothers realized. But unlike Yosef's brothers, they didn't hate him because of it. Exactly the opposite. They said, we want you to teach us. And it was impossible. He couldn't teach them. It was just too high. So they praised him. And they evoked from him this uh, desire to reveal from his essence to teach them. And like I think I've said in every class, you know, can there really be a person like that? That's totally, you know, out of the realm of everyone. Well, Yosef was such a person. Moshe was such a person. I think we said that in one of the classes. That's how Korah convinced all the Jewish people to turn against Moshe. If you look over there in, in, in chapter, it's called Korah. You see, according to the commentary of Rashi, that Korah convinced all the Jews to go against Moshe. Everybody. So, uh, and the reason they did it was exactly that. They said, they said listen, Moshe is not you know, any different than we are. Maybe he's smarter, maybe he's a great, better le leader, but he's not God. You know, he's just overstepped his boundaries. We needed him to get out of Egypt and to receive the Torah, but that's it. And we're already holy and we need him. But the fact is, is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was, yes, let's say, on this level of Moshe and the level of Yosef at Tzaddik, but his pupils wanted him to reveal. And it, like I said, it was impossible, so they praised him. And by means of these praises, it does the same thing when we praise God. It evokes from God, uh, if you want to call it, changes God's mind. Yehi Ratzon, that may it be your will. To change God's will, so to speak. Okay, now the Rebbe is going to say, how can that be? We change God's will. That doesn't make any sense. We're going to see. Let's see. Dalit. Torah Lav, and we have to understand. Mekayim, and since Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai Hoya was moved out, was separated, was removed, Be'erich, in quality, Mishara gone, Mishara Tanaim, from all of the other great rabbis, these great holy geniuses of his time, called the Tanas, Tanaim. Ech yif alu alav, how could they have an effect on him, ashvachim shalahem, their praises? Ba'ad until the orer ulechadesh hashpa alahem, to arouse new teachings and new revelations from Rabbi Shimon to come to them. Like I said before, it's like a, a three-year-old child coming from kindergarten and he praises Albert Einstein, which is, you know, it's a very mundane example here because here we're talking about godliness. Albert Einstein was just a very, very smart and uh, you know, genius person, but he was a mathematician. Other, it could be another, other mathematicians could be like that. But still, let's say a three-year-old child who knows nothing about mathematics whatsoever, you know, the, the, it's hard for him to understand if you have one banana and then you, somebody gives you another banana. Now, how many bananas have you got? And the child has to like really, really think about it and sweat and he starts crying. Right? Why are you doing this to me? And he says to Albert Einstein, Oh, you are so smart. Will you teach me new physics? Right? So I think Albert Einstein is going to say, Oh, yes, I will. Right? The, uh, here is my unified field theory. Here it goes. Listen, are you ready for this? Right? Of course he's not ready. And also the child is not going to affect him. Well, Albert Einstein knows this kid is not going to understand anything. Right? Well, it's infinitely more so with the Tanayim that praise Rabbi Shimon. They say, Rabbi Shimon, you are like, you are as far away from us as God is far away from us. We don't understand you, we don't understand God. Equally, not compared. Incomprehensible. 
that's a lot more distant than a three-year-old child from Einstein. And nevertheless, they aroused him. They aroused him by praising him. You are great. You are the face of God. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai could have said, okay, you know, try it on somebody else. You know, do me a favor. I'm not buying today. Or, okay, I already gave it to, at, the, at the office. <laughs> but they had an effect on him. Says the Rebbe, how could they have an effect on him? And we'll see. He says, and even more, how can we have an effect on God? Let's, let's see. Well, be yoter in a movement, and even more that's understood. Be inyan ashvachim regarding the praises shemeshavchim at the bora that we cre- we praise the creator of the universe. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai didn't create anybody. His wisdom and his understanding was so incredibly distant from everybody else's that they had to praise him. But Rabbi Shimon did not have the ability to create. The ability to create is really out of it. That's really out. I mean, there's no such thing. In this world, in this physical world, there's no such thing as a creation. All you can do is take things and rearrange them. You can, like, how do you say, you can take energy and make it into a mass. You can take mass and take it into energy, but you can't take nothing and make it into something. There's no such thing as nothing. In this world, there's no such existence as nothing. We talked about that. Even in outer space, a vacuum is a thing. It's an empty space. It's empty. I don't know if there is such a thing as empty space. Right. Listen, <laughs> everything is a conduit to Hashem. Right. It's like you go to somebody's house and he feeds you and he's doing it. And so he says, uh, <clears throat> okay, have a good week. Uh, he says, excuse me, but aren't you going to say thank you? Thank you for what? What do you mean for thank you for what? I, you've been staying in my house for a month and I've been... I mean, you don't have to pay me or anything, but at least, you know, a little word, a smile or something like that. He says, I only give thanks to God. Everything you have belongs to God anyway. But you don't do things like that. Right, but who can do a thing like that? It's like the Holy Temple. Why do we pray? When we pray, we face the Holy Temple. God is everywhere. Why the Holy Temple? Okay, because the Holy Temple has no free will. And the Holy Temple is just a, was made, made exactly by God. And its whole <clears throat> purpose, it has no other purpose except for giving God himself. And in fact, it didn't give it out. Right? The Holy of Holies was inaccessible to everybody. Now here these people are asking Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai to reveal the Holy of Holies from himself out in an outer way. People went to the Holy Temple. They went away happy, but they didn't know why. They saw God. God saw them. Well, we're going to, we'll talk about this in the end of this mimer. They saw God. God saw them. What does it mean? I don't know. But they just felt good. They felt that they were creations. Did they understand it? Was it practical? Yeah, it made them happy. You know, they, they, they were less uh, aggravated. They were less, but they felt, and that's the reason the temple was destroyed, because in the end, it didn't really affect them in a deep personal way. Right. But but still, he's a sign. You know, if you're going into, like I said, Mexico City, so a physical sign is good. If you want to come close to God, a physical sign is no good. What are you going to put? A big picture of an arrow going up. The, the things that God, the temple, uh, temple was like a sign, right? It was, yes. But Rabbi Shimon by Yochai wanted to show that God is creating you. In other words, he's creating all these directions. God is creating all being all the time. This is a thing which is not <clears throat> limited to any sort of logic or or uh, uh, intelligence or some system or something like that. You, you can't put it into a system. And Rabbi Shimon did. Right? That you could put God, the infiniteness of God, into a system. That's amazing. Of course, as soon as you put it into a system, you already take the, the, uh, the risk of the, the wrong people getting their hands on it or it doing the wrong thing. You know, that was the idea of Shabbat Tzvi and these people. They, they misuse the ideas of Kabbalah in order to give license to their own passions and their own ego trips and their own uh, power trips. I don't listen. I don't know what if you mean if it worked out too well or not. You know, he wanted his Shabbatites and these people. They wanted their kick. They wanted their thing. 
It didn't last that long, right? But they got what they wanted for a certain amount of time, right? People were running after them. I mean, how long does a person live? This is it's the same thing of. Because Bar Yochai had the truth, right? But there's other examples of people who were totally wrong, and they have big followers up today. You know, billions of followers up to this day, and they were much worse in a way than I don't know if you call worse or better than Shabbatai Tzvi. Ah, but Tzorich Lavim, we have to understand. You have to have the right PR man. Ah, Tzorich Lavim, we have to understand. Since Rashbi was separated from everybody else, how could they have had any effect on him? Doesn't make it. And even more, how can God is totally separate from us? God is creating us. No, there's no such thing in this world as a creation, as a creator. Sorry, I'm sorry. How can we have an effect on God when God is creating us? Like I said, it's like Donald Duck telling, you know, Walt Disney what to do, <clears throat> and Walt Disney listening to him. You can't do that. I mean, he's he's creating him. The rose, the rose, the rose on the will. Lashpia <clears throat> to give over the nivroim to the creations. Hari his orus a on this arousal of the will. In Rabbi Shimon, or in God, we're talking about arousing God's essence. We're not just talking about arousing an as- aspect of God, or one of God's angels, or something. We're talking about arousing God's essence. Come over one, like it's explained in a lot of places, the Al Yudeh Shavachim, that by means of praising God, we're on page Dalit Shin, Shin Dalit. By the means of praise is that we praise God, we arouse God's will, that it should be drawn down. You have it? No, 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 that's the last page. I... No, but that's the last page, right? I, I, in your, I printed the last page opposite the first page. That's the first page. Good. No, no, no. All right, I don't. Anyway, Shin Dalit. Dalit Shin. You have a page. Give me that other page, please. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Give me this page, please. Please, 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 please. Two pages missing could be. Let me see the pages, please. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Gimel, yes. Ah, yes. There's two pages missing. You are so right. This is the first page. The last page. There's one. Two, okay, uh, take, we'll take a break. I'll give you the two pages. <clears throat> 